Hello. Good evening. Welcome. 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 Good evening. It's been a while. I I I um uh, I did life and today I want to share with you some you know some ways some of the best ways of what I think best ways that you can you can survive in Ghana. <laughs> best ways I think you can survive uh, in Ghana. Whether you are a young man who has, you know, completed college, that you are thinking of, how do I survive in Ghana? Or maybe you are, you are a Ghanaian. You you have lived outside the country for a while, and you want to come back home. And you've been you are thinking of, how do I survive? What can I do? How do I put my life together? Or uh, you're diaspora and you are thinking of. Uh, coming to live in Ghana, or maybe take some break uh, to be in Ghana. Some of the things that I think you can consider, you know, as ways to survive in Ghana, as ways to survive in Ghana. So my name is Robin Akoa. Please share the channel or share the video with anybody. And they say click and subscribe <laughs> or hit the bell button as they say it. So uh, hopefully I'll be able to share some few uh, things with you. If you look at our structure, the structure of our economy, um, we have to uh, know that most of us uh, would have to uh, improvise if we, if we complete school, especially, and we live in the, in the country. Because a lot of the times the things that we hear from people, a lot of the times the things that we hear from people, a lot of the times the things that you hear from people, especially young men, you know, when they complete school, I remember we were in the same situation. You complete school, you have your certificate, university certificate, BSc, uh, BC, all those courses. And, um, you know, because we we place so much importance on degrees, and I, I'm, I'm for it, you know, for you to go get minimum education, maybe first degree, I'm more for it. But when you have the certificate and you have come out of the school and you have done your national service, you know, and after a while, the reality sets in. When you pick your certificate or you write applications and you go to a lot of places, you're looking for a job and they say come for an interview or nobody even invites you for an interview. And then you will know what it has to take for you to at least uh, survive in our country. You know, if you have not been through that, you will not see how uh, disheartening it, it is for you to go through all these, you know, things in, you know, you go to do engineering or, or physics or chemistry or mathematics or geography or, you know, psychology, all the courses that they give us uh, these schools. And after four years, you come out, you're confident and uh, you do your national service. Usually if you don't have, you know, some clouds around you, the national service, they will push you to an area that you don't even like. <laughs> <laughs> place and so after national service you you are just hopeful some people are so hopeful that when they finish school uh, they'll be given job i think that you have to really um i don't know if much has changed from the time that we went through this and the time that you as a young man in your 20s you are going through this but i if i were to do this again i will say that the school is good i'll go through it but after the school um I will look at the the, 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 the economy well. And uh, if you look well, you will see that the people who control the wealth, the people who control the money, look at where they are. They are the people who are providing the solutions that the, the economy 
uh, needs. You know, so you have to look at that and put the certificate somewhere. Unless, unless you want a government work, and uh, you can push for government to get into police, military, you know, as a teacher, as a nurse, as a doctor, these professions work for the government, you know. But I don't know how many people uh, can the government, you know, absorb. So if I'm assuming that you, you have tried <laughs> in those areas and it didn't work, and maybe some few so-called multinationals, it didn't work, and you have tried to find a job and you have not found them, I believe that you can find a path to survive in Ghana as a graduate. You can find a path to survive as a graduate. And it starts with you understanding that <laughs> understanding that the school is good, but then to survive out there uh, is not a certificate. I'm going to tell you what uh, what the psyche that we had to have to survive. You know, surviving in Ghana is not easy. The government does not do enough to help the citizens. Ah. <laughs> okay, Antonio. Yes, and that's why we want to talk about this because it's it's not a good position to be in, especially if you're a young man in our country, if you're a young man, a young woman in our country. And even if you have, uh, uh, maybe you are not young, you are now an adult, you move uh, out of the continent, you know, and now you want to come back and you are thinking of how do I survive here? Or let's say uh, our brothers and sisters in, you know, spread around the world and you are looking at coming to Ghana. What are some of the things that you can do to survive because eventually it's important that you have some source of income some livelihood is so critical and i think that there are things that you can consider if you have proper appreciation of uh, the status of the structure of the environment you know so i will talk to the young men like antonio say that let's say it's good you have the education but if you don't have any connection you have been at home for three years four years it, it shows that maybe you have no father, no mother who has a lot or any uncle who has some major connections to get you huge job, you know, or to do some recommendation for you. I'm assuming that you are like me. <laughs> so if you're like me, then I'm just trying to tell you uh, some of the things that you can look at. And uh, eventually you will see that it's not that bad at all. So I would say that put the certificate somewhere. Put the certificate somewhere. Because the other day I was trying to look at something. How many of our top business people do you see who have MBAs and PhDs and big certificates? The, the top business people that you hear, whether they are in uh, media or technology or in retail or in anything that you hear about, most of our top business people, uh, have you ever bothered to find out the level of the education in any country that you even live in? most of the top people who control these businesses or who founded these businesses, founding CEOs, you know, people who have become hugely successful in businesses, you know, and who control wealth. Have you ever wondered and they had to find out oh, the level of the education? Have you ever wondered to find out like that? Because it, 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 the answer you find will help you, you know, so I'm talking about some of the things that you can survive. You have to clear your head that where the, you have to know where the problems are and look for the problems. So I completed school. Uh, they pushed me to go and do another one. And uh, when we came back to the country, if you if you were, I mean, you were looking for a job, <laughs> it took forever. It took it's okay. It took forever. But then it was obvious that business was open. And the thing about business is that nobody is going to control you. Nobody is going to stop you. There is a lot of heat there. There's a lot of difficulties there. There are, there are pressure. There's pressure. But it's also, for me, it's the best way. And when I talk about business, whether you want to start a farm, whether you want to start uh, to sell what the farm farmers produce, whether you want to import something to sell, whether you have a skill to provide a service. I think that your ability or your, the intention, you have been deliberate about, I want to live in Ghana 
these these are the skill set that I have, the problems that can solve from where I am. Those things will help you. We have to make the decision to say that let's say we want to start business because uh, there was no uncle to give you to Minister of Defense to give you some, you know, general. <laughs> there was nobody to tell you that go and see this man, they will give you this uh, big position or go for this interview or become this. But it was obvious that we had to do something. And so we condition ourselves. We just told ourselves that uh, we want to start something, we want to start business, you know, and it didn't look good when we thought about it. But now, I believe that is 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 among the best ways to survive in Ghana. Whether you're a young man, whether you have lived somewhere and you want to come back home, whether you're diaspora and you want to come back to Africa, your ability, because then when you make the decision, when you settle this in your mind to say that, listen, I am not going to look for, I've tried for five years, especially the young men and women, you have tried for five years. Even if you had any job, you were not happy with it, you didn't like it. You are still thinking that you will get something so huge and they will pay you big salary. You have not had that. I think that you must settle that, okay, what can I build? What can I build from where I am? You know, I'm not talking about somebody who has options. I'm talking about those of us who seem not to have any other options. I'm saying that the best way for you to survive here and uh, it will go beyond survivor when you when you are getting it <laughs> when you are getting through it you see that is one of the best way the most fulfilling of all is to is to condition yourself to say okay i have these degrees i have these certificates i have this but uh no but i'm not trying to, i'm not getting anything from anywhere i want to start a business and so what do i have to know to go through this journey you have to make the first decision I'm not saying that when you push, you will not get job. You would, you would, by all means. Some people will take them five years. Some people will take them eight years. Some people maybe one year if you have work connections. But if you're like me and you have nobody, you have nobody to support you, then I'm saying that you have to settle in your mind that, okay, how do I live in this country? How do I survive here? And I'm saying that the best option is to start a business, to start something, put yourself to a project. Somebody will say that, ah, but I don't have any money. How do I start? <laughs> so then we, can just, we can look at that as well. But there are a lot of things that you have to edit in your mind. Because I've seen people who have waited for the best job forever. You know, because every, th every time that they get even another job, they, they just still don't like it. And if you live outside the country and you want to come back home, you're not coming back home uh, to look for job. Don't come back home to look for job. Come back home uh, to look for solutions. So this is where I I want to discuss with you. I have not worked, uh, you know, so I don't have those kind of in terms of job and corporate life they call them. I don't have that kind of exposure. I don't have that kind of experience. So I don't know much about that. What I know is this, and I'm going to share with you some of the things that you're going to meet, some of the things that you encounter. You know, so entrepreneur, the entrepreneurial line is tough, but a good way for me. Yes. And uh, the, the earlier, I mean, I'm sure if you made that decision and you made it well, you see that you're going to go through a lot of hindrances, but it's the best way. You know, so you can decide to go into farming. You can decide to go into poultry. You can decide to go into wholesale. You can decide to go into retail. You can decide any industry, whether it's real estate, industry any portion of the real estate that maybe you retail the materials there or you want to become an agent you want to look at how you can provide some services you can you can sell electrical products you can sell uh plumbing pl you know it, look at the industry that or maybe you want to go into agriculture everything from the farm uh, to what they supply to the farmers to to the produce from the farm and any service in between Maybe you can even look at, I want to uh, found, uh, um, uh, uh, let's say, finance company that will uh, help farmers to get access to credit. You know, that is something, which means that you're targeting the agri field, but now you are looking at finance in the agri field. Somebody will say that I want to target the agri field, but I want to look at technology. How can I help the farmers uh, with some basic tools to help uh, the activities? You know, so or somebody will say that I want to look at 
maybe manufacturing or processing. Somebody will look will say that me, I want to look at the fashion industry. You know, I want to produce something, maybe some bags, some slippers, some uh, some clothes. Somebody will say that I'm in so much interested in the IT business, you know, software. Whatever that you decide, there are, there are, there are so many sessions of business, but you must decide. You must look at your skill set. You must look at your passion. You must look at what uh, the area that you live and what problems you can offer or you can solve. Some somebody will say that I want to go into waste, uh, you know, waste processing. Or I want to go into waste collection. Somebody will say, somebody will say that maybe I want to go into uh, production of manure. Uh, you know, there are so many things that any of us can think of. The moment you you are able to settle that, then you say that okay, so. Having decided this, what do I have to become? What do I have to become? Because then it becomes a journey, you know? And so that's what we went through. So most of us, I'm saying that uh, if you have this thinking that you are going to get, if you are producing a lot of these graduates, you know, maybe 300,000, 400,000 every year, let's assume that 10%, 20% will get job. 80% of us would have to think like this. Uh, it, it's a situation that you can we, people debate it until they are in it. <laughs> Somebody will tell you, no, but not everyone can do business. You know, not everybody. You can debate all those. But when you have been at home for five years, common sense should tell you that <laughs> nobody was born an entrepreneur. <laughs> all of us were born to eat. So find, <laughs> find solutions. There are problems everywhere in this world. And there are problems in our country, in Ghana. What can you offer? There's one thing when you have no exposure, no network, no, 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 no finance. And it's another thing when you have even lived somewhere and you, and you think you have some finances, you have some skill set, and you, but you have never built a business. The journey will be different from the young man who has no exposure at all. But it starts with the frame of thinking. You must settle that. This is the frame of thinking that I have in Ghana. It's, it's the easiest. I've seen people who become so much frustrated just waiting to look for job for employment. And that's why some of, some of them will just find, will just give up to say that I'm, I'm done with this country. I am going to look for a visa to travel to another country. At least when I get there, I will get some cleaning job or something like that. You know, but you have to understand our system. And I'm saying that our system, the best tool that you can develop is the ability to start and to build your own business. It's the best way out. It's not the time, it's not the time to convince yourself whether you, you, you can start a business or you can't start a business. But you so believe that you can be an employee. <laughs> People don't have any problem. They never ask a question, is everybody born to be an employee? That question I don't hear. But a lot of the times I hear this question, is everybody born to start a business or to be an entrepreneur? I think that it works both ways. If everybody is not born to be an entrepreneur, then everybody is not born to be an entrepreneur, uh, an employee. It all starts with the way you look at issues, the way you you prepare yourself, the way the thing, the philosophies that you develop along the line, you know. But the frustrations are rare. Yeah, rare. You can be a diaspora and you have come, and uh, you are looking for job, and you have gone everywhere, and your friends you call them and they don't pick. What you don't know is that there are solutions that you can easily offer if you understand how you can put your thoughts together and put a business around it and go through it and be ready for anything that comes you know but just like you can be taught anything i think that you can be given the basic tools of business so that you understand a lot of things and then you leave and you try and you take your own decisions and your choices so it is very key that you settle that as a young woman as a young man, you have tried everywhere and you become now you are so you want to even give up on yourself. And, and, and you know, you have gone every people have promised you everywhere, come, come, I will give you this, go and see this man. You have done those things for how many years now? And uh, <laughs> and your mother looks at you and you, she, she's she's sad because you you completed Lego and now you have nothing. So whenever they go anywhere, they are discussing you because he finished school and uh, I'm still feeding him at home. It's not a good feeling, I tell you that. But the same as he can can re put uh, can put he, together his thoughts and start something and start to sell something. You see, the thing about it is the decision. 
you don't have to master a very big business plan the decision to say that let's say i've been at home for uh, this long this while so now i want to start something that decision is key it's very key so so the certificate is good it's nice you look at it but once you're out of school put a certificate somewhere <laughs> because if the certificate was that good why have you not had a job <laughs> <laughs> if you don't believe in that certificate, why are they? Why did they, they employ you <laughs> when you were, when you were being given the certificate? You know, so it may not mean that much to the market, and that's the reality, and it's a painful reality for most of us to 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 see that all these things that they made you to write all these exams that you were not sleeping. Now you are out, and nobody wants to even look at it. And a lot of the times, when you even go for interview, they don't even ask you. Uh, what grade you had and what course you had. <laughs> Have you ever gone for an interview that they didn't even ask you the course that you had or the grade? The grade that you were so much passionate about and you thought that you were going to get a uh, first class, uh, you know, so in those days. You must take that decision to decide the path that you want to go. And I'm saying that in our country, one of the best parts is to decide to say, I want to be in a business. And then you start to develop yourself along that line. It will take you a while, you make you go through a lot of things, but eventually you start to make sense, you know. And you don't go into it thinking that you know, I'm just trying if it doesn't work. Listen, it works just as you've been pumped on the other side to so much believe that you have to go and prepare a certificate and look for a job, and you believe so much, you're confident in it. That's why when your friend told you that I know this man, go to see, go and see him, he'll give you a job, you're so much, you never doubted it. But when they tell you to think of starting something, you say that uh, <laughs> in this thing that they are telling us, we can't do it all. Till it to the top. Hello, my sister. Hello. So it's a it's a it's a frame of thinking. And what I went through is that if you if you have these certificates and you are, you are here and you think that somebody is going to call you and look at your grades and and tell you that oh, you're very good, I come here, we'll give you this job, give you this car, give you this house. And they clap for you, my friend. Don't wait for that one in Ghana. The structure here is entirely different. But I'm saying that the doors, if you can train yourself, if you can build skill set to build a business, the doors are so many. That one, I can tell you. And it's the best way to live in Ghana. You know, so you can you can start. Maybe look at farm. You maybe you live in Accra. You may not so you may not be interested in farm, but what can you offer? What can you trade in? What services can you render that people will pay you for? What solutions can you provide? Look at that. And the earlier you look at that, the better. Because I've had friends who thought that, when, you know, they saw us start business and they thought that we were crazy. And so they were so much in, interested in, you know, the big job with car. Now they have had the big jobs with cars. And sometimes they want to call you to say, oh, now I want to open a shop. I want, I, mean, <laughs> I want to start a farm. Some of them will tell you, I want to start a poultry farm. Somebody will tell you that I want to produce a, a yogurt or I want to process orange juice to sell. Somebody will tell you that I want to start a restaurant. Somebody will tell you that, you know, I want to start a mobile money business. Somebody will tell you that now I'm building uh, maybe a microfinance company. So... We may not be wrong if you tell you that the best way is to start. Because sometimes when you have never worked in, in any so-called organized um, labor market, you may think that you're not enough. That's something I've seen about people who have never had a job in any, in any place. They always think that they must work with their certificate. They want to see what is there, you know. <laughs> Even if they have something that is working. They're never proud of it. They don't feel like it is okay. And I think that is a hindrance to you growing from the level that you are. Whatever that you're doing is enough. Whatever business that, whatever company that you're looking for the job, you know, somebody has started it as, as you know, as scattered as it is. Somebody has started it as not, not, not so nice. And now that company has become giant and people are very proud to work there as engineers, as receptionists, as you know, accountants, as project managers. But somebody else, somebody started it from the level that never looked nice. You know, so your, that's your best option. 
the best option is to think and so especially uh, if you're if you're if you're thinking of relocating to ghana too is the same you have to go you don't think that you are coming to ghana and a job a few of you will get a job a job that you'll be very proud of <laughs> majority of you would have to create the jobs and eventually even give other people jobs so i think that we must train majority of us must train along those lines that's 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 my position you must train along those lines and so look at the idea look at the idea that you are convinced that this idea i can develop it into a business and also tell yourself that it's not going to just come like that you're going to go through something and some of the skills that you will need will be the you know the ability to work with people the ability to be able to sell uh, the ability to withstand the pressure that will come the difficulties the disagreements within you and the disagreements around you there'll be a lot of doubtful uh, doubtful moment so to say you know where you are not so sure of you know if this thing is going to work if, if you're going to lose your money it's just those are just human uh, nature they should not stop you from pursuing what you want to pursue you know and uh, most people around you will also doubt you and will also not talk so much uh, to encourage you to be a business business is one thing that most majority of the people who start uh, never get any encouragement from the people around them i don't know why most people are <laughs> so don't expect a lot of support from people who know you who, who who walk with you every day when you say that i want to start something most people would only come on board when it starts to work but when it's at the stage where it doesn't look that nice nobody will, will look at it for you and so look at that and so and and also go and study how a business is put together if you have never done business before if you have never uh put a business together before go and start what are the things what are the requirements what are the things that i need to know to put a business together because the way you are designing that business is going to um, uh, uh, be responsible for how how quickly you succeed or how daunting the journey becomes the, the, the information that you have in putting that business together the business that you register are you registering it as a limited liability company or you're registering it as a is a sole proprietorship and then you know an enterprise you have to decide that and what are the advantages and the disadvantages you must so go through that thinking because these are the things that <laughs> so if it's a limited liability company you know the, the taxes are different uh, you are you are going to learn, you know, some things like pay as you earn, as pay ye. There's tax that you they take from you when you're paying uh, your workers or when you're paying yourself. There's something they call income tax or corporate tax. You know, they take from you. There are other things that they, you would be required to pay. If it's an enterprise, too, it's treated more or less like an individual, so that they handle you differently. But there's a, a tax on the profit. You know, so these are things that you must be aware. You must know them they should not put you down they should not they should not put fear in you but you must be aware so once you start to go on the journey uh to become a business person there are so many things that you are going to learn in in so many things in that short time it's, it's so design the business so that it, it works out well and technology is happening technology is happening there are so many young people who are just using their smartphone to sell t-shirts to sell tomatoes to sell uh shoes slippers there are so many young people who are just using their whatsapp their facebook their instagram and they are they are, they are realizing a lot of revenue the thing is that you must be proud of it the moment an idea starts to work you must be proud of it and what i've i've noticed is that if you have never done it if you have never done business before and you're a hustler you're struggling uh with what to eat and <laughs> what to even sleep then don't go into a business that is a project kind of business what i mean by a project kind of business is uh, let's say i want to start a uh, poultry farm you know so now i have to raise money to build the structures and put the you know the poultry there and feed them until they get to a time that they can you know lay eggs and then you can start to sell something it's a project kind of business it takes a while you must have money to support that but if i want to sell eggs i could just have 100 ghana cities and go to a poultry farm and buy the eggs and go to the market and look for buyers when you're when you're a hustler 
when you don't have much i will focus on the business that can give me revenue from day one even if even if it's not huge profit because that can make the journey a bit uh, easier for you you know so i would rather go into selling a product selling a service when i don't have any backup when i don't have any financial support when i don't have any source of income because listen if you don't know where the food is coming from where the rent is coming from it's not that simple and these things compound the the stress the pressure that business people or entrepreneurs or those who are thinking of starting businesses go through so i will not uh, i will not underestimate the impact of uh, how long it takes for the business to start to bring in revenue you know so if you don't have much then look at selling a product don't go into production first go into building the, you know building the skill to develop a market and to sell something because even if when you go into production when you are done with the production whatever that you're producing you still have to take it to the market so why don't you build something that gives you strength in terms of you know be, being able to build sales network or, or marketing network so that you understand it if it's portrait that you're, you want to go into i'm producing the eggs you know uh, somebody's producing the egg somebody's producing the chicken somebody's producing something uh, they always people are always looking for somebody to help them to sell their product or their service so if i don't have anything at all i would look at that and a lot of the times those are far less uh, cheaper uh, to enter you know so i want to go into uh, water production or water processing then i will just say that okay somebody is producing the water let me let me start to build you know some kind of sales point some kind of um, some areas that i can sell this product when i when, when i understand where how these products are sold on the market when i've been able to build the, the, the network for it when i understand the market if i start to produce i will i will know where to sell it you know especially if you don't have any uh, backup any source of income it is the easiest way so if you're a young man or if you if it's your first business and you don't have much understanding about business then don't go and produce it learn from the selling learn from the marketing develop maybe you open a shop maybe you just pick the product and go and look for people to buy maybe you're using your phone to call people to tell them about what you sell and they'll tell you that come bring it let me look at it your ability to develop that uh, will help you to succeed faster in business than your ability to produce a, a good product that you don't know where to sell it <laughs> you know so a lot of us will fail because we don't have any clue as to how and where to sell our product you know so i would rather look at how do i build the infrastructure to sell these things if i master that area it's so likely that i will, I will succeed with my business i know people who are producing but they the, the, the skill set that they have to develop a larger market is limiting therefore they are very good with production but the business is not growing because they don't understand how to sell it how to sell how to go and convince people to pick the product from them how to push people to take whatever that they are producing so uh look at that if you're a young man particularly or if, if it's your first business if you don't know a lot about business structure something that you can sell then after that then you can go into the production and very complex things when you have money when you have the network when you have the infrastructure when you understand the market when you understand the business when you understand the economy it's not difficult for you to say that now i have money or i can raise money to build a plant uh, to build a big farm or to build to you know to start a big uh, poultry farm or to build you know big coconut farm because any project kind of business continues to suck money it takes money continues to take money so much up until a point that you can get something to sell so if you don't have uh the funding and you've not been able to convince people to give you money to continue to put in that then if you take anybody's money rather look at how quickly uh, uh, you can sell that product and give the person's money to them as you keep the difference the profit you know so my name is Robin Dago. i'm talking about best ways to survive in ghana and from my experience uh 
if you have no connection, no money, nothing, and you want to come to Ghana, look at where the demand is, and the demand really, there is high demand uh, for businesses to start, and and your ability to know what business to start and how to structure the business, and to organize yourself and provide um, the services or the products needed, uh, will push you in uh, you far better. And uh, if you're successful with it, you will start to employ people as well. You know, so now you're going to learn how to work, not only with yourself, but also how to work with others as well. You know, how to work with others as well. So you're going to learn a lot. You're going to learn a lot uh, to know because <laughs> to survive in a country <laughs> is, is, is easier when you understand the market. It is easier when you understand how to put a business together. It's easier when you can build something uh, for yourself. So if you're a young man, look at that. Don't be so much uh, overwhelmed with your your grade and your certificate. <laughs> you know, if you <laughs> don't be so much overwhelmed, especially if you're interested in getting a job. If you're interested in getting some people will say that no i want to go and do phd to so they think i want to go and do postgraduate you know masters so they will go and look for scholarship or travel to germany or somewhere for free scholarship you know and do the masters and do the PAT, you know things like that they come out courses that we can use in our country and you know they become authorities in areas that have no relevance in changing <laughs> the critical needs of the masses you know of our people so um well, but those are decisions that you have to make. But if you are going to make decision to be here, then you have to look at it's business, it's trading, it's starting something, it's doing something, it's solving a problem, it's providing a service. So what is it that you can provide? Look at that and package it well. Our economy is in that kind of status. And that's why anybody who can think in terms of business, in terms of uh, solving business uh, problems and providing solutions in terms of entrepreneurship, if you plan them, in our economy, they, are, they can easily see the loopholes. They can easily uh, come up with solutions. They can easily start a business. Easily. It's a skill set. It's something that you have to develop. And so if you're a young man, you must think like that. And if you have started something like that, don't just give up. A lot of our young men so much give up. Any time that they, make any, they meet any trouble, they just give up. Don't give up. Expect the problems. And when problems come, it does not mean that uh, <laughs> you can sell through. They just come. They come. Some of them will actually punch you down. Some of the, some of the, some of them will actually would want to take you out of business. Some of them will will really destroy everything that you have built. Some problems will come and you don't know what to do. Uh, go to sleep. If you have to start back again after three months, go and fight. You know because that is the option. That is the option, and I can tell you that eventually it pays off. It pays off, but you have to do a lot of mind shifting. You have to do a lot of money. the problem for the young people and even for uh, pe uh, for people who want to come and live in Ghana. The problem a lot of the time is that uh, to a very large extent, uh, we've been conditioned uh, to look for job and to say that once you have a job, that's it. You know, a lot of us think like that. Majority of us don't think in terms of business solutions. Uh, you have friends who tell me no, yeah, we are, business is not for me <laughs> business is not for me my friend tells me that business is not for me come now i can't go through that pressure but if you don't have any other thing to do what else can you do so then you have to build the circuit for it you have to build the mindset for it you have to be ready for the fight if you join the military and they are, they are sending you to war you have no option but to you know, so, you know, but to succumb to the training and become the best at it, because when you go to war and you make mistakes, what happen? They take you out. So uh, you, you, you don't convince yourself with the with the negatives. And a lot of our young men and women would want, especially the young boys. They explain everything as if they know everything. You know, except the solutions. <laughs> they can explain all the problems, but uh, you ask them for the solutions. Uh, they, they are not able to give you the solutions, you know. So be ready for this. And whatever, what's whatever skill set that you have, 
whatever skill set that you have. If it's technology, if it's social media skill set that you have, if it's video editing, if it's uh, whatever that you have, anything that can generate revenue for you. Young men all over the world are looking for that. Go to the internet, go and study. Look at what others are learning. Go to YouTube. Look at how young men like yourself are generating income over the internet. If you can build anything like that, you can build your business like that. If you, people start to pay you for that, that's a business. Be proud of it and develop it. Continue to learn and develop it. If you don't like the internet and everything that is on it, maybe go to the market, go to Makola, go to Adum, go to Techima market, go to Tamale market, you know, go somewhere and go and learn from the people who are selling on, on the market. You know, go to the go through the street, talk to some of the young men who have been trading all these years. Put the certificate somewhere if you want to, if you want to survive here. <laughs> Put the certificate somewhere. <laughs> and then that is very difficult for people with certificate. We had to do that. I put my certificate somewhere. I put it somewhere. Because I didn't know what to do with the certificate. <laughs> we put it somewhere. So what can we do now? Because the training that the certificate gave me, what I was out. I mean, I didn't know what to do with it in the first place, you know. So, put the certificate somewhere, if you're not, and look for problems that you can solve. You're trained as a, as a chemistry student. You're trained as a chem chemistry student. Put the chemistry somewhere. If you have to sell purple, go ahead. Hello, hello, brown, cold, blue. If you have to sell coconut, go ahead and sell it. Put the certificate somewhere. If you have to go and do mobile money, go and do it. What is so much important is how you start. The courage to start is where, where the important thing is. Being able to start some the business, not just writing about it and talking about it. Though. Being able to start it and collect the first money from a customer <laughs> that is it you know so that is what you have to do if you are waiting for help if, if you've been waiting for help for somebody to give you a job and they have not given you and that's why you tend to agree with everybody who insult our leaders and insult everybody and say that they are not doing anything the Utah let's say when you were children they used to say those things now we are adults don't use your life as an as, as 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 an experiment. Don't let anybody use you as an experiment. Take charge of your life and do something. Do something. The solutions, the 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 the, the prosperity is there. Just ask questions. Talk to people who are doing it. Be open-minded. Be ready to learn. Ask genuine questions. Tell where you are, where you don't know, just tell them, let's listen. I don't know this. I don't have any business idea. Can you help me? I don't know how to handle this thing. Can you help me? This is a whole school on its own. If you hold on to the certificate they gave you, you will you would have to wait for the government to give you a job. And sometimes you can wait. I have girls who who work with us who have waited for the government for years. <laughs> They are waiting for government to work. So don't wait for the government. And in, in the middle of all these things, don't be bitter. Don't blame people. Don't blame your parents. Don't blame Ghana. Don't blame the president. Don't blame all the politicians. Take charge of your life. You know, so this is very key. Go and learn how a business is built and start something. And start something. If you can't start something too, then take any job and be ready to work and be honest there, and be hardworking, and be respectful there. You can gain a lot of skill set there too. You never know. I, I met somebody who told me, a friend actually, who told me that when he started, he didn't go to school much. He actually maybe didn't go at all. you know. And so he started with his father. He was a farmer, but he didn't like the farm. So he moved at a very young age. He came to the city. He came to work with you know shop owners as boy that they were sending around you know and um, he took decision 
after an incident, he took decision to say that, listen, if I'm going to work with this man, I'm going to be 100% honest with this man. I'm going to protect his interests. He did that. Such that without him, I mean, when he said that he was leaving the place, the man had no other person to, to count on. These are the things. So when I was listening to the man and he said something with me, he said that, uh, Kwabna, uh, if, if, if I employ anybody, now he employs a lot of people. If I employ anybody, I'm never scared of what they can do to the business because when I was building the foundation of my business, they were not there. So nobody can, can take it out. <laughs> I built the foundation myself. And what did you use to build the foundation? You use hard work, you use honesty, and you continue to learn all the time. He treated people fairly with respect. This is somebody who never stepped in a classroom. He went to look at a property that he wanted to buy. And that property was, uh, these people were looking at uh, 360,000 US dollars or something. You know, he converted to Ghana cities times six. And he was ready to buy that property and crash it and develop it into uh, a whole different concept, whole different. He was trying to build an apartment. Yeah. This is somebody who never stepped in a classroom. The kind of intelligence the man has. <laughs> you can sit with him, you could talk. He's a young man, he's in his 40s. He's not old. He's in his 40s. And you have gone to school, now the school has become a burden to you. No. This is somebody who has fought on the street. He started when he was, you know, 10, 14. It's now in his early 40s. At least over maybe 25 years, 30 years experience that he has had on the field. The intelligence, the courage, the energy that he has, the honesty that he has. He told me that nobody can crash this business. Because I paid my dues in building the foundation. I built the foundation. So I so agree with him. That when you build a business and people come to work with you, they can go. But if the foundation is right, if you understood how to structure the business well, they can come, they can go. The business will continue to grow because you set the foundation well. So these are the things that are you as a young man, if you are building a business, you must take with you. He work, he works, he does the work. He doesn't give excuses. If he has to meet somebody 12 a.m., he will go and meet them. 11, his phone is on, and he's not trying to trick people. He's straightforward. So people believe in him. People will give him money without even collateral. You know, so when you don't have these things, develop them. Develop them. People give you money, be straight with them. Don't run away with the money. Don't cheat them. This, because a time will come that good people, people with money will start to trust you, will start to believe in you, will give you opportunities that money will not buy. Even if you had money. I know people who have money to buy something and the owner said that, no, I won't, I won't, I won't sell it to you. If it's you, I'm not selling it to you. Somebody told me that. He said, this guy has money. He has come here, but I'm not selling this property to him. But he was selling the property because he knows his character. <laughs> so money cannot buy character. But character can get you a lot of money. It's key. So you're a young man, you're here and you're complaining. A lot of the times when you're complaining and you're talking, the problem is not so much the environment. The problem really as difficult as it is, is you. There are basic things that you have not learned and you have, you have not learned them and you have not practiced them and you don't believe in those things. And that's why you, you feel frustrated. So if you come in to Ghana to build business, these are the things that you have to, uh, you have come into Ghana, you're looking for a way to survive, but maybe you come with some level of money put a project that you know that uh, it will not exhaust all your money and it will get to a point that the project will start to give you money or maybe start a business, start a, something that can easily start to give you revenue and do them as professionally because these are the areas. If you're coming here to look for government uh, work or multinational work, some people will get, but not many. 
a lot of us will have to fall on creating our own businesses, creating our own opportunities, creating our solving our, solving economic problems and be and be compensated uh, for what we solve. This is the psyche. This is the best way for me to live in Ghana. You know, if you want to live here, look at that all the time. What is it that is in your hand? What 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 talent do you have? Can you build a business around it? What skill set do you have? Can you build can you build a business around it? What passion do you have? Can you build a business around it? What is it? Who do you know? Can you can you turn it into a business? Everything that you're holding can become a business if you know how a business is put together, how a business is organized, how, how a business uh, is structured. If you know that, you can turn so many things into business. What is it that you can sell? What is it that you can solve? What problems do you see? Can you build business around them? They're everywhere. If there is any skill set that you need in this century, in this COVID, uh, time going forward 2021 going forward if there is any skill that you have to polish it is your ability to turn an idea into business it is that ability it is that ability so if you are one of those people who believe that uh, <laughs> uh, business is not for everybody uh, you better cancel that because sometimes you can find yourself without job and the only way that you have to do is to create one for yourself you know, so when you come to Ghana, look at solution. The thing, the very things that people call you to ask for help, you can turn those things into business easily. People call you for something all the time. Can you help me to do this? Can you help me to do this? Can you? Help? They're always asking for this information. You can easily set something up and say that I want to serve more people. So this is these are the things that I've said. And if you can, if you can use technology to package it, nobody will know the size of your business anyway. <laughs> As a matter of fact, there are some websites that don't have any, any you know, it's just a website. You go there, it's very nicely designed. You think it's a big business. It's, there may not be so much big business in terms of infrastructure and office and all those, and even number of employees. But, you know, it's business. You go to their website, you have no idea where their office is. So it's a matter of your packaging, the ideas, the, the services, the things that you have in mind. You know, you go to the market, you see that maybe the, the tomato, you know, they're wasting them. Or maybe you go to the village and you see, maybe you went to the village and you saw how many foodstuffs that they had there that were wasting. Maybe you can build a whole new channel to sell those things for them. Or maybe you can process for them. You never know. You know, maybe you can start a whole restaurant out of that. <laughs> you never know. Maybe you can start a whole shipping business out of that you know maybe you can start a whole maybe you went to the village and you saw how they were handling the mining companies maybe you can start a whole mining company you never know maybe you went to the market and you saw the women and you saw that they were looking for uh you know more capital to expand their business that could become a business for you to do so you, you once the idea comes then you start to look at all the other things that you must develop you know but don't forget that you're going to work with people and you must know how people work. You're going to learn a lot. So my name is Robin Dako. I'm trying to close. I'm trying to close and I'm telling you about some of the things I think the best way to survive in Ghana is to turn your idea into a business and to turn your skill into a business. Uh, it's to pick up a project. Uh, it's not wait for somebody to employ you. Majority of us may not never have that. So if you're, if you're a student or if you're a young person, and you become frustrated because you have you have completed school five years, you don't have anything. And uh, I'm sure if you're talking to your friends who live abroad, <laughs> you would want to go and get visa and go. Or maybe you have tried several times, they didn't give you the visa. So <laughs> that, that's the only reason you are here. <laughs> maybe it's a good thing. You never know. Maybe it's a good thing that they didn't give you the visa. You never know. Because a lot of the times, the victory comes out of the pressure. Sometimes all, all the other avenues may have to be closed so that you can go, to, you'll be forced to go through the right one. <laughs> a lot of the times, a lot of the times, sometimes you sit back and all the opportunities that were denied you were actually a blessing to you. A lot of the times you look back, you say, ah, maybe if you had taken this part, it would have been something else different, you know? A lot of the times. So the pressure that creates you the pressure that creates you is good the pressure 
will, will, will push you to find the right channel. <laughs> it happened to me several times. Hi, my brother, Abdul Edi. Thank you. Thank you. So the pressure is key. Most people miss life because they didn't meet the pressure. Most people miss life. The man that I told you about, he didn't go to school. He probably cannot even read, cannot write. He has a lot of money now. He's a major trader in, in the major market in, in Accra. But the pressure that he has gone through cook him. So now his meat is hard. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of the times you're not able to take opportunity up because of the pressure that comes. the pressure that comes we are not able to withstand that that's why a lot of people lose a lot of people like comfort a lot of people don't like controversy and you know difficulty and stress in this life if you want to become successful you want to achieve your dreams you must be ready for that if you're not ready for the pressure for the difficulties for the challenges <laughs> compare the the pottery the pottery the chicken that they were they were in the confined area and the one that is from you know if you go to the village the one that is there what we call if you are cocoa the one that is there the free the free range one those are hard ones they're tough the pottery one any little sickness they they die <laughs> the other one they can't survive anything and this is the journey this is the kind of mindset you need for business you need to be cooked to withstand the pressure. You need that. So if you're if you're trying to take the easiest way out all the time, you're not ready for business. <laughs> Your mindset is not ready. Your mindset is not ready. So pressure should not shock you. You should actually be thankful for all the things that you thought you were losing or you lost. A lot of the times they were just preparing you uh, for the next stage of life, you know. So, so be ready for that. Don't always cho choose comfort. Choose destiny, not comfort. Don't always choose. Once you have what to eat and what to drink, that's all that you need. Go for your dream. Just need something to eat and where to sleep. The rest... Never choose comfort. Never choose, oh, this is a nice shoe, this is a nice car. Choose your dream. Go after your dream. No man is satisfied until they leave that which is within them. Every one of us knows within us that this is what I was meant to do. Every one of us knows it. When you're doing when, when you are in the middle of it, you know it. When you are not in the middle of purpose, you also know it. And nothing aches your soul more than when you are not, you know, you're doing something that you know this one, you're just doing it for the money. But this is not what you you, you were designed. This is not the contribution that you were made to uh, make. But you only chose because that was the easiest way out to get money. After a while, when you are eating and you're drinking, the pain will never go. Is when you are fulfilling destiny, when you are taking the challenges, when you are doing something that is compelling, when you are doing something that uh, drives the best out of you. That's where you start to feel living like a human life, like a human being. <laughs> that is how you start to live as a human being. So go for destiny, go for purpose, go for great dreams that you have and never let anything stop you. That's how you live your great life. So when you when you start, this is the things that I think. In if you're living in Ghana, go for the dream. Don't go for comfort. Go for the dream. Go for the dream. Hey, my brother Jacob. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I hope you're fine. You know, so uh, look for that because sometimes you are talking to young men, and the complaints you hear, and we can understand that, and it's okay. But I think uh, there is a higher position that you can take, which means that, listen, I completed the school, I have the certificate, but our economy, you don't leave our economy, you don't live in this economy with certificate. Okay, unless maybe you, you want a government job, you know, or government position, then maybe a certificate, or you want to become a lecturer or consultant. But majority of us will not get into those because we have money, and those positions can't take everybody. You know, so if you find yourself like me, 
<laughs> and then I'm saying that your best way out is to start to convert the ideas that you have, the skill sets that you have into business, into something greater. And you have to, you have got to learn the processes required, the steps needed, the skill set needed to turn that idea into a business and to be proud of it. You've got to learn that. And when, and the school is not, they didn't give you this. That one I can tell you. The school did not give you any skill set to leave this thing that we are talking about. <laughs> I was there. I was there. The school probably helped you to get a job. You know, and if you have a job, your certificate becomes important. If you don't have any job, then you have got to recreate another course for yourself. You know, and that is the school of life. It's very, you know, it's, it's not smooth. <laughs> it takes a lot of courage, <laughs> but it's the most fulfilling. It's the most fulfilling. It is the most fulfilling. So my name is Sobin Dalko. I'm talking about her. Uh, if you just join us, I'm talking about ways to survive in Ghana, best ways to survive in Ghana, ways to survive in Ghana. I'm saying that if you have that psyche, you know, say that when I come to Ghana, this is what I want, I'm going to look for this job, or you're a young man, I'm, I've tried to get a Newmont job, MTN job, you know, I've tried to get a, you know, Vodafone, nobody has employed me. I'm saying that the opportunities are still around you. Just restructure, recondition your mind. You will start to see who are there. And these are the things that we told ourselves. We put the certificate somewhere. We put it somewhere. We were at Makola, we were at any street boys, you know, we were selling, we were just picking something. Sometimes you go there because it's just a training, you know, it didn't matter. And it didn't matter whoever didn't think what you were doing was not good. It really didn't matter because you are going somewhere. You were going somewhere. And once you're going somewhere, you focus on where you're going. <laughs> you know, you focus on where you're going. So most of us should look at building business. I'm telling you, it's the easiest way out. I'm telling you, it is the easiest way out to survive in Ghana. If you're looking for a... <laughs> so, uh, you have tried for five years, nobody has picked you. Just saying that maybe you can start to sell uh, sugar cane or more food or uh, even water on it. Don't, I really, I'm not, I, I, they said, oh, he finished, uh, completed university and uh, he's selling, he's, he's selling something on, on the head or on the street. I, mean, I really don't care. A five year plan if you're coming from the West, plan away. Yes, sir, plan away. And um, as much as you can plan to build something that will generate revenue for yourself. You know, the, and the news, the media people will make it seem like it's, it's, it's so strange for somebody to complete school and sell something on the street. For me, it's no strange at all. I think that that's the time that they start to get sense. Uh, I think so. Because if you have, if you have plan and you're on the street, the opportunities that you identify and that's where the, the school then it will become important. Then the school will help you to start to study well and be able to locate and see trends. That's the essence of the school that you had, the education that you had. It's not so much to get a job. And if you don't get it, then it, it means that you're you are a disappointment. No. So you can start anywhere. Don't listen to anybody who is a survivor of the fittest. <laughs> and that's why I just, well, in the beginning, I said that, give me one example of people who have BSc, MSc, PhD, who are doing so well financially or, or have built businesses in Ghana. Give me examples. It, it is almost like the people who went to school only, were, uh, only become great when they work for government. That's all. <laughs> They never take risk. They never try anything. Just give me an example. How many? How many? Can you give me examples? Good business people who have built something, uh, went to school. Because all the school people have been conditioned to look for a big position or to travel. 
you know we have left the business for the people we think they didn't go to school so so when you are when you are completed school and you stay at home you think it's not for you it is for you and those are because our we listen when in countries that they say there is job there is job there is job people created the jobs people built industries it will take you to take me to take both of us to build the industry that we all want and it doesn't matter how you start you're going to learn through a lot of things my friend he told me and now he can he can pick money it took him maybe 30 years <laughs> he can buy properties in millions and he never gave up he never gave up you know so have that kind of mindset if you can monday pick go to the go to go through town look at what you can do what you can sell and be proud of it and never feel like you are you have lost you know never feel like that and if you are in the west and you are coming come with that thinking what can you build start gradually start small just as somebody said have a five year five to ten year plan yes start small learn it maybe you have never built a business before now you're going to learn you know maybe you have worked as a professional but this one you're going to because building a business is different from professional scale or technical scale being a business is somewhere technical the fact that i can produce uh maybe i'm a, I'm a builder i'm a building you know construction engineer it does not mean i can build a construction company they're different things together the fact that i'm a doctor does not mean i can build a hospital business the fact that i know how to cook does not mean i can build restaurants with multiple locations the fact that i can produce a shoe does not mean i can build a fashion uh, company with multiple locations so the skill set for both the, the skill set to produce the product and the skill set to build a business they are not the same they are not the same they're different and you have to know how to uh, build them. So what, what, you start gradually, put something, identify an industry that has your interest, an industry that has the need that we are looking for. The industry can, can maybe can produce uh, some jobs, it can be IT, as I said, it can be agriculture, it can be uh, waste management, it can be water production, it can be maybe retail. Retail is a big market area a big area of business agriculture and everything in between is big area real estate construction big areas manufacturing maybe it what is it that inspires you and it depends on you maybe you can even put a lot of investors together and go for the big kill look at maybe building supermarkets you know in our country or maybe maybe building a whole uh mobile mobile company mobile uh, television company or maybe building a whole plant that is going to produce uh, shoes or, or hospital equipment or computers or mobile phones, uh, you know, what is it? Or household items, or maybe going to produce uh, liquid soap, building industries, whatever that you're thinking of, continue to think like that. And because these are the, this, if, you, if there is any area that we need, this is it. But because we need people to create jobs. If you, if you employ one person, or two they will help and then that's where we will continue to learn you know we need more people to believe in what you're saying for Ghana to move smoothly yes sir we need that because we went through that if we completed school nobody was there to give you a job and you go through here and they say no and what do you do just say okay put the certificate somewhere <laughs> and then let's fight you know and uh, you're going to make a lot of hopefully you don't make the mistakes that we made There's a lot of them were just stupid mistakes that we made you know maybe you, you will not make that maybe you are just wiser i don't think i will start wiser <laughs> so mistakes will come from you know taking wrong loans or uh, having you know bad contracts or you know employing bad people who destroy you uh, you know what kind of things uh expanding the business where you are not ready or employing more people where you're you not ready you know trusting the wrong people these are things that you're going to meet all the time and uh, i made them in a high level which were not good 
but maybe you will be wiser and which expect that you don't make those kind of uh, crazy mistakes that uh, we made you know but you probably will, will be so wiser to expand well so these are the things but you have to hello hello everyone greetings for uh, yes uh, miss Wilson. so think like that look at an industry maybe you want to start a farm maybe you want to start a, a construction company maybe you want to build properties uh, look at that and go through it gradually understand the processes because for me these are the areas don't come looking for job don't it's, you may not you may be disappointed big time you know or maybe you team up with others come up come together maybe one or two three people come together and put something there and see what you can do you know and my friend uh, they are building uh, these hospitals that do scans uh, hospital is a hospital no uh, labs that do scan medical area he's a he's a medical person and they they're trying to team up with other friends uh, to build uh, uh you know these centers like labs that do scans cct uh, something something like that scans for people and they they, they go they, they are not in Accra, they are not in Kumasi. they went to other part of ghana and their intention is to build multiples of them you know this is a great idea and if they are able to push themselves through, of course, there will be difficulties, there will be disagreements, there will be problems, but they should not stop you. They should not stop them from pulling. So maybe you cannot do it yourself alone. Sometimes it is difficult for you to start alone. But sometimes if you join with another person, you can have the momentum to start something. Some people have the ideas, but they don't have the energy. Some people have the energy, but they don't have the resources or the know-how. You know, so if you look, maybe you look some, you look at somebody, you look at a friend, you look at somebody that you think, oh, let's think of something. Can can we look at commercial farming? Let's look at maybe looking at you know buying a land and getting. Pull, pull, if you alone cannot do it, team with somebody. Yeah, there will be frictions, there will be problems, but uh, study them, study them, get to know their psyche, get to know where the the attention is, get to know beyond the money what they are thinking and uh, i think sometimes a lot of the times if you come together to it is easier to start you know it is but it's, it's also tough to maintain the business relationships because it's not that bad at all i think we tend to think too big when we start a business but not everybody can start big you see not everybody can start big yes so whatever level that you can start start something and uh, if if you can't start alone Look for a friend. Look for a friend. I started some businesses with friends. Uh, we did some huge projects. Some of them not so good, but uh, at least we learned a lot from that. Okay, so till it to the top, we are seven people working on opening a farm. Fantastic. So can you imagine seven people? Everybody bringing money, bringing their expertise, bringing all the networks that they have. The, the farm will just be. A big farm right from the beginning because they have put a lot of resources together. So I think we should also look at that. We should also look at how do we work together? You know, how do we work together? So when my friend said that, I was very much impressed. Three, three schoolmates uh, coming together. They all work in the head center and they see the need, you know, and they pull in together. They just have to, you know, make some few things uh, clear. And and it's, you know, they are there. Uh, sometimes you alone, you may have the money, but you may not even know how to pull everything together. So that's, uh, to lead to the top, that is a great idea. Great idea. So what kind of farm are you building? What kind of farm are you building together with your, with your team? You know, so some people can pull together and build maybe houses for to sell. Some people can pull together and go and process the cook, um, cocoa beans into chocolate. Some people can pull together, go to Akumadan and take the tomato and build tomato processing plant. Some people will say that we want to build a waste processing plant or waste, you know, uh, maybe waste collection. Waste collection is also another area. I don't know, government has a lot of things there, but I think it should be open for people uh, to you know, bring in better equipment, better machines uh, to handle the waste. 
you know, but it's a political game there. So I can't say much. But if you're processing the waste, that could be different. That could be different. Uh, some people can look at you know, the minerals. <laughs> it's open. It's big. Some people, I think that African Jews will be looking at what can we do to say, uh, to build our own uh, supermarkets, like what the shop right and game people or the Melcom people. How many Africans are also coming together? Those with expertise in this area, especially the diasporans. Can we have about 10, 20 people coming together to build big supermarkets? To compete some of the south africans and what they are doing here <laughs> it's one area one area that I, i'm so much looking at how many people can we pull together to also build something like that because i think that we should control our own food that one i think so you know poultry pig okay pig and and goat wow fantastic fantastic so which area in ghana are you doing this so that i think that we can do that if you pull seven people and everybody is bringing thousand, that's seven thousand. If everybody is bringing ten thousand, that is seventy thousand. You can do a lot. And so, I think we should be coming together to do this. Even if we fail, we'd have given it a shot. You know, and people should also come together uh, to build uh, venture capital companies uh, that can invest in a lot of uh, uh, entrepreneurs. It's also another critical area that our people need money. Uh, not only money, but also coaching. And, uh, and, and a lot of the things that they have to know for the businesses to, to get well structured and well organized. And the kind of character that you have to build as entrepreneurs uh, to have you know, this access to search funds. Because uh, the moment you are able to do that, of course, you have to train them. You have to condition them before you, can, you give them money. But if, if anybody is in that field, it's a huge area. If you can gather some funds and invest, you can pick one industry, maybe in those startups in agriculture or startups in processing or in fashion or in IT. If you can pull some resources together and, and look at industries like that, there is a huge need, critical need. Um, uh, funds that can be long term and that can be a bit uh, cheaper. Uh, if you have, if anybody has expertise in that, it's a great area. You don't have to do, do it in Accra. You can do it in any other <laughs> region <laughs> where you can easily uh, groom the people and help them. You can change a lot because not only is the fans, it's also sometimes the direction, the expertise. We just started saving towards it. We want to build it in the next two. Wow, wow, wow. Those are great ideas. Those are great ideas. What would you do with four acre of registered beachfront property? What would I do with that? Um, if you can manage a resort, if you can, if you can manage, um, I don't know if it's a, if apartment, I don't know the roads that go there, how far is it from and how many people live in the area, but I think it's more should be for recreation of, you know, things. Some, something like that, unless it's close to the area, uh, to the city, or has uh, high density, then you can look at uh, maybe building uh, to sell, something like that, you know. So that that's what I think, but it depends on the area. So where do you have the property? Is it in Accra or is it in Pram Pram? Is it in Cape Coast? You know, but we need to look at these ideas. I thought uh, we should come together to build and we should not be afraid we should come together to build a lot of there are a lot of young men and women with great ideas you know who need not only money but also directions directions and training and ethics and and character building and the skill set to develop the idea or the business some of them have even the business going some of them have the product some of them have the business running but how to organize it well and even how to project them, you know, and those who can also build uh, maybe market across the African continent or even beyond can also help because uh, some people produce, but they are not able to take, you know, build the, the channels to, to sell the products that they produce. So there are a lot of uh, opportunities. Uh, Senya Breku is the area. Okay. All right. So I think it could be for resort or building something that people can move from the city to come and enjoy and come back to the city. 
maybe uh, maybe uh, a hotel or you know guest house or something like that could also help you know but look at always look at the traffic look at why people come there you know you can you can always look at uh, what will work when you see why people come to the area and why, what what kind of people come there what do they come there to do what is the uh, you know what, what if you look at them do you think they have money to spend you know so the concept you know do you have any advice for us i will say that um you may start it uh don't wait up to the two three years you can start with little but then who will manage it in ghana who will be among the among the seven people uh who who will be resident how is it going to be all of you are going to be involved directly or some will just bring money and somebody or you are going to pick somebody to run it and who will supervise the person who will run it you know i think those things should be i don't know how how you have you know explained that to you to yourselves but those should be and i i don't think you should raise a lot of money to come and do it unless you have been doing it somewhere and you really understand it uh, other than that then you have to find a location and just try one or two of each and see in the, the reports that will come you know maybe if you have hundred thousand maybe you can just look at let's put in one thousand and see if uh, you know because you're going to learn how to manage all these guys who are involved the greek people the, the people who come and inject them where you will source the goat or the pig or the poultry you, know, you can just try it and see a little and also you will also know how working with the seven people will also look like you know so try something small and see before you 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 pick the big picture or the big project four acre of uh beachfront land will be awesome to have as you can easily start and grow in many areas okay right so jacob is also saying that so okay so all of you will return in terms of the management okay that's fine and uh, are you running it as a business are you registering it as a business and um you know is everybody going to be a director or some will be directors some will be shareholders will be the ceo if you're registering it as a company you know uh, who, who will be uh, you know all those recommend and what is the level how do you see such project and would you structure the project it said that others others will uh, can come and join later what are the modalities you know so depending on the level that you are picking it uh, you can also uh, maybe look if you some of you are financial people you can structure it so well that it becomes a big pool uh where people can invest in in the same project and maybe get some returns without necessarily also being involved in the project and um, after you have produced it uh where do you think you're going to sell them where do you think you're going to sell them? You know, you are. You have to also think about that. The poultry. Where do you think? Are you going to process the the meat, uh, or you're going to maybe build, you know, your own outlets to sell them, or you are going to sell them to the to the restaurants, or maybe you are even looking at building your own <laughs> restaurant. You know, where do you go from after production? You know, so PJ yes so there is a lot that but i think that we should we should show interest in business especially we should that's where the pressure should be and especially when i was beginning i asked a question i said how many of our people do we know who have higher education who are uh, for who are the forefront of businesses in our country whether it's production whether it's media whether it's uh, housing whether it's the finance financial sector or whether it's retail where do we have our people we want to know you know so we have produced a generation of young men and women of educated folks who only look for uh look for look for us watch out for us we will be on your show one day wow <laughs> yeah, i will i'll be glad we can organize that i'll be glad i would want to know because a lot of people would want to know how you're doing that how you're pulling that together you know because you never know when when i listen to i watch videos especially on youtube I just listen some people telling their story and so many ideas will start to come a lot of things that we don't understand then you start to look at it uh maybe from a different position so I yes we can organize that 
you can we can we can we can engage that we can even do that uh on fa on on youtube uh live you know i would want to do that so how can i find a business partner in ghana i live in canada wow what kind of business partner are you talking of what business are you looking for what do you have in mind and some of the characteristics that i say you should look for will be uh make sure that you know somebody who knows that person and uh, try to check them how they handle money and how they handle people it's very key and the level of understanding that they have in the business that you you you, you are going to do is very key always look for that take references and check them you know it's very key it's very key and what position are you going to also uh, play are you bringing money or you are going to be involved in the business the way my my understanding is that um, you should be involved in the business if you have time if you don't have time then invest in just money uh, you must make sure that the person is really somebody who has done business and understands it and has the character and to be truthful to you to be honest straightforward and because uh, when people take money they change <laughs> <laughs> and one of the major skills that our people would have to learn is how to pick money and be straightforward with the money the person who gave you the money and um, even if you lose it you should never cross your mind that i won't pay the money you must make effort to pay the money and don't intentionally take people's money and lose the money because they work for the money they traded their sweat, their time. You know, so if you're going, if you if you're going to build business, if you think that you're going to be an entrepreneur, your only safety is your honesty with money. If you're not honest with money, and with people who give you money, and you take them for granted, then you may, you have to make sure that you are always getting free money. The moment that you can't trick anybody to get money, your business is gone. But your surest safeguard is that people can trust you with money. If people can trust you with money, you will never run out of money. You know. But if people doubt your character when it comes to money, then you have a problem. So you're a young person. If somebody gives you 100 CDs, you are good. I have boys who just will come, oh, boss, I need uh, 500 Ghana. Uh, can you help me? You give the money to them. <laughs> Then the next minute they will dodge you. They will never even they know that you cross this time, you cross this area at this time, they won't show up again. No. You must qualify. Uh, you must pass that test where people give you money. You must pay back. And don't put your interest ahead of somebody who gave you money. The person has given you money. Now you are thinking of you going to use that money to do another business or to solve your problem. No. You ask for the money. Give the money back to the person. That is that is number one character. If you don't have that, don't start business. Don't do it. Go go and learn that before you start your business. In this our country, access to funds, it's not that simple. So if anybody gives you money, sometimes because we are learning, we will make mistakes. We will lose the money. We make wrong you know decisions. But you cannot start to do well and forget about that. You cannot start to do well. Now, you, you, some, you, somebody's 20,000 is with you for five years, 10 years. You have a car. You have Range Rover today because your business is doing well. But you have forgotten to pay that 20,000. How can you forget 20,000? Somebody's 20,000 with you. How can you forget that? You can't forget that. If you do that, you are not ready for business. You have character break. It will come and destroy you. And that's why a lot of our so-called business people will flash money. But they don't pay their debt. They don't pay the banks. They, owe. they don't pay anybody. They take advantage of people. One of the most dangerous people to trust and to take as a partner is somebody who does not pay the people they owe. If they don't pay people they owe, you, they can never be a good partner with you. Take it from me. They always trick you. They will come and lie to you and take the money because they know you're a good person. But they never pay back but my experience with such people is that uh, they struggle no matter how far they go just little thing will bring them down money is not something that you have to 
always keep lying to get. You don't need to. Just be straightforward. Because people trade their life to give you money. Make sure. We made a lot of mistakes with money. A lot of them we corrected and we paid back. We didn't run away from the people. You know, so you don't have to run away. Pay people back. You know, and if anybody expresses a character, that person could be a good partner. Because when people are not greedy, they always become good partners. <laughs> because otherwise, it's easy. Just work hard. It's easy. But to be straightforward, when you are the one in charge of the business, and tell them that 10, 10 came, this is yours, this is mine. You know, when the money starts to come, they start to change their figures. <laughs> they will tell, they will tell you, know, you have to pay this. No, don't trick people. When you are, when you are going, when you, when, when you, when you are sick or when you die, are you going to go with money? No. So always, don't take the trust of people as stupidity. No, don't think that if anybody trusts you to give you something, they are stupid. They are not stupid. They just trusted the wrong person. You're not stupid. So long time, uh, my big boss. May God continue to bless you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. May God continue to bless you. <laughs> I thank you. So I think that we 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 have to learn. We have to really uh, study and learn. Don't don't take people for granted at all. When somebody gives you money, uh, yeah, yeah, you have to learn that. Study it study it all the time continue to tell yourself people around you will tell you no don't do that don't get send the money you know take your time don't take your time people so many boys you give them money they won't bring it back you never become a great guy if you don't have character the business so the partnership is key Okay, let's work together, but it's a problem when people start to see money. They start to tell you that they are wise. <laughs> they are not wise. They just building something that will crash easily. Because just one person can wire you money because they trust you. They just give you the money. Say, take it. When you are done, bring it. And when you start business, you are always in need of money anyway. You know, but when you screw people who give you money, you are screwing yourself. <laughs> You're screwing yourself. So my name is Obinda Alko. I am talking about uh, one of the best ways to survive in our country. Uh, best ways, ways to survive is to start a business. You have completed school. Nobody is giving you a job. Go to the market, go and sell okro. Go to the market, go and sell broni wawu. Do something. Don't stay at home and cry. You know, don't stay at home and cry. Don't stay. Yes, madam. My number, if you go to the contact there, my phone number is there. You can send me WhatsApp. I'll be glad to. Uh, yes, I'll be glad to. So, young man, if you're looking for opportunity in this, from 2021 going, you know, if there is any skill that you have to develop, is ability to turn your idea into business. Never forget that. <laughs> Never forget that. Your ability to see an opportunity and turn, and build business infrastructure around it. And there, are, and I'm saying that in Africa, that is the biggest, biggest need. The ability to turn a business, turn an idea into a business, and to and to start to employ people. And it's everywhere. Every when you when you from right from your door. Going, you always see business opportunity. Look at the woman who is selling Gary and uh, and uh, and Gary, you know Gary, Gary and uh, what is it? Gary and Beans, you know. That is a business opportunity right there. You think that you are going to school, so you can sell Gary and Beans, okay? <laughs> but, <laughs> somebody is selling cocoa there, you know. A lot of the cocoa women that you see, some of them have multiple locations. Every day they make sales. You have no idea the investments that they have made, which they says that they make from all these things. Some people sell Diehu and you know Tozafi. Uh, some people have chobas, multiple locations. And you say that you have gone to school. <laughs> you don't you didn't go to school. If you went to school, you will use your head to solve problems. 
you know so look at that that agent you can help people to rent you are there you are just speaking english you can do a lot of things that you see around you don't have to be a genius just just copy what people are doing and do it better that's all you don't have to have any special business idea don't wait for that <laughs> just look at what people are doing and do it well do it more do it in a more in a more organized way do it with more respect with more honesty that's all if you can do that you can turn any business just look just anywhere you go people are selling books just the same test book people are going to people's houses to teach them you can always build a business around it idea college is somebody who started uh, like that you know <laughs> he's not teaching you know remedias i think you know he even has secondary schools go and talk to such people how they started it's the same so it's not it doesn't so much matter how you start what matters is the skill set that you can develop what you started with into something uh, you know significant more significant and more you know a better business you know so it's not so much you don't, you don't need any special no you don't need some people are selling chalewate yes chalewate some people are selling water some people uh some people are selling anything so you don't make yourself special put the certificate somewhere five, five years you have no you have no job you are still believing the certificate <laughs> put it somewhere and go and find something to do and be proud of it okay because that's where you're those skill set thank you thank you thank you to, to the top uh, thank you thanks so much i love watching you thank you so much i i watch your channel here and uh, you talk about real estate construction those are key things that those are key information that you're sharing you know because when people are building uh people take it for granted uh for granted uh, building because it takes a lot of expertise and technical skills you know so uh those are key information that you're giving and you're saving people money and you're saving people money and time uh, okay you're full of financial wisdom so i always like listening to your lectures Thank you, Eugene. Thank you. We want you to build significant things. They can be right that Lebanese, Indians, Chinese want to build businesses and our people are looking for government work. No, we must build some. We must build some and it must come together. Yeah, you cannot underestimate the power of trust in business. If, they, if great men don't trust you <laughs> with money, who would trust you with money? <laughs> If people don't trust you with money, who is? How would you become wealthy when people don't trust you with money? Even the mafias are trusted with money. <laughs> the mafias, they you know, we trust them with money. <laughs> so you can be trusted with money. Learn that it's a skill set. And never take people's money for granted. Always. Never take people's money for granted. Never. So I'm going to wrap up and uh, I thank everybody for taking time to watch. And um, you can also share the channel with people you know, you know, gradually. Uh, and the good thing is that somebody will watch and, and send you a message and that's good. And uh, I like to hear the feedback and what, if what we are saying makes sense. <laughs> You know, we should not just be a people who are just, you know, into comedy and fun and, and politics and sports and religion. No, our problem and our, the, the problems that we need to solve, they are not in those categories. Our problems are in the production, in the business, in the word creation, in the job creation, in turning our raw materials into finished product. In creating job opportunities for a lot of our youth. That's why I think that 90% of our time should be spent conditioning our people on how to work and be truthful and be honest, how to build business, you know, because these are the things that if you solve them, then a lot of the other things can be minimized, you know, or can minimize. But, um, you know, unfortunately, people, <laughs> people, would want to feed us with entertainment and sports whilst they drive their nice cars 
and they condition the people to be average and to be satisfied with little. Never be satisfied with little. So many people need you. Never be satisfied with little. So many people depend. If you become successful, you will affect so many people's lives. So long as we are giving birth and the population is increasing, we will need a lot of people to be worthy. You know? So that's the, you can't solve poverty with poverty. You solve poverty with wealth, <laughs> with riches. So if you are not becoming rich, if I'm not, if I'm not becoming rich, what are we solving? You know, so you need a lot of our people to, to spend a lot of time to think about such things. And unfortunately, the media that we have is just sports and entertainment and unnecessary things. Changing the lives of the, the minds of the people, because if any people have to focus on key things, uh, like financial information, job creation, production, product development, you know, ethics, things like that. It is us. Unfortunately, uh, our people, especially those in the media, they behave as if we are very, you know, <laughs> productive country. You know, we need to up our game. We really need to up our game. So any little time that we get, we also share. Because these are the things. We can't do much if you don't know much. No people can change anything until they know. And how would people know unless they engage with knowledge, you know? So we are the ones to, the little you know, you share with somebody. The little you know, you share with somebody. People shared a lot with us. That's why we, and we continue to learn. So you too, you share what you know with somebody. Even if they don't listen, don't worry. You have planted a seed. <laughs> People will come back to you and refer you to uh, a statement you made some time ago that you, you don't even remember. But maybe when you were making that statement, they were fighting you. Saying that you, you are too know, you think you know everything. Don't worry about those things. Say them. <laughs> when they are in trouble, they will go and look for that. They'll, look, they'll go and look for the information that will give them uh, solutions, okay? And when you're in trouble, and when they are coming for, when you can't pay the children's school fees, when you can't pay uh, the rent, when you can't pay the mortgage, when you need when you need some drugs to keep yourself alive, when you have to go and do that surgery, it will come to money. It will come to money. A lot of the times, if people have money, their lives are saved. Somebody will just tell you, ah, but we have a lot of rich people that die, yes. But we have far more poor people dying than the rich. Because a lot of the things that kill the poor, the majority of them will not necessarily kill the rich. You know, if you look at some of the accidents that we see, let's say uh, we, the car, you know, some people get accident and you look at the car that got accident, it's the car that saved them. And some people will get minimal accident and they will die because the car was safe. The car itself was what? What's wrong? The car was in a bad shape. Yeah. So little impact, people's life are lost. So don't underestimate what we, 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 we teach here because they save lives. If your finances are good, even you can keep the marriage. If there is no money at home, uh, tell me, most most partners, most married people, married people fight because of money. A lot of the decisions that they fight about, they are linked to money. You go and look at it. If you solve the money problems, a lot of other things can be solved. That's true. So it's key. I don't know why they have taught the world to trivialize the very things that will make their lives more fulfilling and less stressful. You know, I don't know. Because the key things that you must solve before before you go to play <laughs> in finance is part of it. You must solve it. Solve it. Then you can go and joke. Ghana must solve it before we can pay a lot of attention to football and to Shatawali and Sakodi and all those boys. You know. But unfortunately, they want us to put them first and leave the work that will transform our country behind. Is there a directory or consortium of businesses needed in Ghana? And what businesses? 
I think you should go to this website. Go to them, GIPC, GIPC, Ghana Investment Promotion Center or something like that, GIPC. Search them, please Google them. There's a lot of information that they offer. And uh, Ministry of Trade, their website, you can also look at that. There's a lot of official information there. And uh, if you're looking at going into major areas of business, uh, those are the institutions that you have to have direct contact with. You know, so if you're going to major, major areas of business, um, if you have significant uh, money that you want to invest in any area, uh, please look for them. And Ministry of Trade has a lot of information as well. But most of the most of the time, GIPC, I think their website is gipcghana.com or something like that. Uh, look for them. They will be they will, they will be the people that you have to deal with. You know, and there is also diaspora, um, diaspora unit at the presidency. Yes, you can also search them. I think they have a website as well. But if you need, if you need the other things, you can send us a message. If we can also ask other people to um, give you the information that you need. You know, so um, never never trivialize. We should not trivialize the impact of business. Of, of development of production on our people because those are the ones that are creating the jobs it's not it's not sports it's not entertainment it's not comedy it's not religion it's people building businesses and it will take you it will take myself you know to do these things and that's why we have to get a lot of our people to think like this you know and uh, the young men and women must think like this instead of you thinking of running away think of solutions production things you can build things you can produce and ask for direction all the time and uh, i then say put the certificate somewhere go to work because <laughs> <laughs> if you don't do that the, the certificate gives you some sense some false sense of uh, capacity you know people with certificate always be like, when you are talking to me i'm an engineer but he can't do squat. So, so <laughs> put a certificate somewhere, go and learn. You know, what can you produce? What can you build? Where is your resource? That is what we need. But people will show you a certificate, they can't produce anything. You know, so put there, put it there, go and go and sell something, go and develop something, go and build something. And uh, no matter how small you start, be proud of it. And if you fail, go again there is this young boy who uh more of him will call me said that he, want, he had a product i think he was producing or orange juice or something and uh, he always will call me so he said that i i need uh, you know documentation from the government i said you produce something and give it to your friends who are having party in the area and tell them to pay you Produce it around your area, start to see revenue. Then you can go to the government people to help you to organize your things. You know, because when they come, they ask for you, you're supposed to pay some things before they give you those certificates. So test the idea on the market. <laughs> produce something, sell. <laughs> sell. That's how you learn business. Sell. Because whatever you're producing, if people are not going to buy, if you don't know how to sell it to people. So can you build infrastructure to sell or can you take the product yourself to sell? You know, we built infrastructure to sell. So our, our shops, we learn how to build shops without being there to manage them. We learned that over the, you know, over the years. We learn how to develop properties without being present. Engineers work. We learned that. But we went through a lot of things to get there. And we still go through a lot of shocks every day. <laughs> but should that, should they, uh, make us feel weak and disappointed, never, not at all. Because we understand the Africa that we are contributing. You know, so you have to understand that I'm contributing my part. You must continue. You also contribute your part. Like um, uh, Tilly to the top said, seven people, they have come together and this is what they have in mind. Another person said, I'm looking at a big front. What can I do there? You also look at what can you do? I also look at some, that's how we are going to build that. Don't wait for the governments in Africa. If they come on board, fantastic. 
I personally believe that our development will, will probably will come from the ground. May not come from the top necessarily. <laughs> I hope I'm wrong. <laughs> I hope I am wrong. So true. We <laughs> I hope I'm wrong. So I want to say thank you very much, uh, Jack Jack Singh. And uh, I want to thank you very much for taking time to be here and to share your uh, trust. We have to use knowledge we have acquired to solve realistic problems. Yes. There's, there's, and the, the importance of knowledge is to bring improvement, to bring change. If you have knowledge and there's no improvement, you don't have the knowledge. The proof of the knowledge you have, the strength of the knowledge you have is the resource you produce with the knowledge. If it's strong knowledge, you will produce resource. If you have not produced any resource with the knowledge, whether it's the shift of mind or clarity or physical product, yeah, there's no knowledge. <laughs> That's no knowledge, you know. So a lot of the knowledge that they give us in school, okay, I won't say much. <laughs> much of it, when you finish school, you don't even know what to do with it. But it's still very important. You have to go anyway, because that's what we came to meet. But use them as a tool. They should not be the end itself for you. The certificate should not be the end. It should be a reminder that you have more to do, you know. So uh, thank you very much for watching and uh, good night. Good night, Eugene. Good night, uh, Jack. Good night, uh, Hilda. Good night, everybody. Thank you for taking your time to watch this. And please uh, subscribe to the channel and share the channel with your friends as well. Thank you. So see you some other time.